a very special guest in this hour uh, is Mark Gatiss. What are you doing there, Mark? Um, I'm just I'm here just to see American Ultra, which is on the, <laughs> the pictures. I'm not going to go now. I'm just going to watch the the trailer. Maybe that's the right length for it. That, honestly, there, it is becoming increasingly the case, Mark, <laughs> yeah. that you see trailers and you I think know. that's the movie. They give away the twist sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but not, but yeah. not, I mean, there are and also the amount of trailers which now feature the very final shot. But if yeah. you see the trailer, for example, for Vacation, the remake of Vacation, the trailer's, you know, it's a pretty sharp bit of comedy yeah. at two minutes long. <laughs> but when you see yeah. that over the space of an hour and 40 minutes, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, it's not well timed. Yeah, so Mark is here as a special guest of the Shetland Screenplay Film Festival this evening. We are showing An Adventure in Space and Time, which is a wonderful piece that he did about uh, the creation of Doctor Who. And then we're going to have a, a, a Q&A. Have you seen Adventure in Space and Time on a big screen before? Yes. yes. With, a, with an audience. Right? Yes. It's a, ter- it's a to Tell us about the creation of it, because it's such a great piece of work. For those who don't know, it's about William Hartnell being cast. And to tell us about it. Uh, well, it was uh, it was commissioned for the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who a couple of years ago. I mean, it was uh, really a... A pet project of mine for years. I've genuinely, I first pitched it uh, about 10, 12 years ago, and uh, you know I haven't worked on it every day since. But it really has been going on that long, and uh, so to finally get it off the ground was was amazing. And the strange thing is, it's not. I mean, uh, John Pertwee was my doctor, but the, the the beginnings of Doctor Who were always a kind of you know uh, like a creation myth to me. <laughs> I, I, I grew up with that story about about those amazing people who just put it together with no money and lots of amazing ideas and it it's i i found the whole the whole process was was fantastic and, and david bradley is amazingly yeah. touching as, as hartnell and and a, a complete dead ringer for him on yeah, screen which yeah. is extraordinary no, because actually you know it, it, it not it, when you look at him you don't immediately think that is no, william hartnell no. but extra, you said that thing about uh, pertwee was your first because i'm 52 and you are yeah. Uh, 19. 19, fine. Yeah. So my first Doctor Who was Troughton, yeah, Troughton who yeah. I always remember, who turns up at, uh, at the end of this story. And yet, the, there is something so iconic about Hartnell's version, of, because when they first invented uh, Doctor Who, the first thing they said is, well, he has to be about 700 years old. Yeah. And Hartnell was the only one of them who we actually looked, looked like he was about 700 <laughs> years old. And he was only old. 55, but, but, but as you know, everyone was older then. I mean, he... he, he uh, People looked so much. I've got pictures of my my grandparents on on the beach, uh, my granddad in a three piece suit with his trousers turned up and his hat on, and he was probably about forty five, probably about forty eight, which is what I am, and and he looks about seventy then. You know, everybody they had hard, very hard lives, I think. And uh, Hartnell was um, an, an extraordinary man, really, uh, and not an obvious choice, but it, the the part completely changed his life. So it's a it was a a celebration, really, and in so many ways, but also a kind of, well, really a love letter to the to the show for me. With your your work on uh, Doctor Who and and Sherlock, and I mean, you achieved extraordinary success. Are you still as much of a fan as you always used to be? Because you once said that you were the sort of you know the uber fan. Are you still a fan? Yeah, of course I am. Yeah, I mean the thing is, it does. To be honest, I mean, uh, Doctor Who and, and Sherlock Holmes were the two things I loved most when I was when I was a kid, and and still I still are. I mean, what happens is. The experience of of working on on them is is sort of still divorced from the original feeling. It's kind of tied up with it. But Doctor Who is is now is not an exercise in nostalgia. It's an ongoing, yeah. living, breathing, brand new show with a new audience. Sherlock is a new show, but so I I can still sort of compartmentalise. I don't feel like um, it, it, the fact that it's very hard work and takes an awful lot of effort and time. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't sort of um, impinge on those memories. I can kind of mesh them all together. Thank, thank God. How do you find time to get everything done? Because you do it, you've got all that going on. You've been on stage. You've got a break from the stage yeah. show at the moment. Yeah. Tell us about the stage show. Uh, it's called Three Days in the Country. It's a new adaptation of the Tegenev play, uh, A Month in the Country, uh, by Patrick That's Marber, uh, and it's going very well. But we're at the National, so we're in rep, so I'm able to come to Shetland, uh, and uh, and then going uh, to Sweden on holiday very good but you're not going directly from Shetland you're going back to yeah, I don't know why. back to Heathrow first which makes no sense whatsoever we've got to get our, everything ready for the ABBA museum which and, is in fact the principal reason for going to Sweden <laughs> and uh, film stuff uh, it, it, I know there's stuff in the pipeline some yeah. stuff that you can't talk about yeah. but 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 the film you will be returning to the world of film very soon hope so yes actually I've done I did uh, quite a few um, cameos 
in last year. I mean, that's I say that as if as if my name's being put in a special box. <laughs> I just have small parts in them. <laughs> I'm in Victor Frankenstein, which amazingly is my first horror movie. Wow. Which Paul, wow, uh, Paul after all Wigan, this time. Yeah, has, has directed uh, with uh, Daniel Radcliffe and James McAvoy. Um, I'm in uh, a new Le Carre film called Our Kind of Traitor, which I just saw a couple of months ago, which is great, I think. And... And Dad's Army, which is out next year. Oh, wow, of yeah. course, yeah. And uh, it, we should just ask you, because uh, earlier on this week, as you know, uh, Wes Craven died. Anybody who's interested in, in horror, uh, I think, has a huge amount of respect for Wes Craven. Certainly one of the most articulate champions of, uh, of horror cinema. A ter- always a terrific interview. And I think a brilliant filmmaker. Kim Newman tweeted, you know, uh, Wes Craven reinvented horror at least four times. Most yeah, people struggle yeah. to do it even once. Yes, absolutely. What, 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 do you th- what was your thoughts about, about his work and his life? I, well, I always got the impression, I never met him actually. Strangely enough, when I was doing my uh, History of Horror, mm. we, we chose to stop at Halloween just because we sort of had to stop somewhere. But we, I remember him being in the mix of potential interviewees and it, and it never quite happened. But um, I wish I had met him because he always seemed very gentle, but also... Uh, in something which is rare he, he was very happy to be accepted for doing something that people loved and I, I, I suppose he, he probably wanted to make some sort of civil war epic at some point in his life but he'd become a horror director but he was actually seemed very at peace with that yeah yeah and, and as you say i mean to sort of create the, the, the slasher genre and then completely reinvent it uh you know for another generation with, with scream um and then, of course, the Last House on the Left, etc., and those earlier ones. Um, I think he was, uh, an under, well, as ever, a very underrated filmmaker. I think. I mean, I, th- I think he was he, extraordinary in what he managed to do. As you say, always completely at peace with that. And, oh, and the thing that I always loved about him is he always described horror in very positive terms. He mm. always said it was a celebration. He said famously, horror films don't create fear, they release fear. Yeah. And he absolutely yeah. saw the experience completely. of watching horror as being... Yeah boot camp for the soul you know you work yeah. out all your fears yeah. in, a, in a safe environment why do we why do we uh, keep having to have this argument <laughs> i mean it's basically what the greeks did yes. that's that's how it started the, the point of it is catharsis can i ask we you all... can i ask you about your outfit in frankenstein please my, my outfit your outfit because um, i still think one of the scariest things i've seen is you in wolf hall and that hat that you wore <laughs> as you emerged again from some it's called a coif that is it thing. yeah and um how'd you spell I, that uh C O I, like Quiff, that. like Quiff. It must <laughs> no, be. A... I'll, I'll come back. Oh, to I think is that where the Quiff came from? You know that it's one of those those droopy um, sort of Terry Gilliam things yeah. that you put over your face, and then the hat on top. That's all it was, and and yet uh, five people I thought were friends, including my brother asked me if I was wearing a false nose. Uh, because well, I didn't it, have a problem uh, with your nose. It was, you look, you were fantastic. <laughs> no, but it, it, it sort of it accentuates uh, certain features um, a lot. <laughs> so in, uh, in in Victor Frankenstein, I wear, um, oh, well, I, 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 a rather beautiful Victorian lab coat, etc. Et Lovely. And what is it that you can't tell us about? Oh, I can't. Tell you can't you. tell you about well, that. Well, vaguely, you know, vaguely. Mark, well, I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 that's fine. Well, we I don't just... know anything about it. So, I could, is it a movie that you can't tell us about? Well, wait and see. <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? Well, listen. T- t- since you can't tell us about that, just spend a few don't, minutes. Ex- explain. Don't tell me about something else. <laughs> explaining to Simon because he won't come to Shetland. You've only. I know you only just arrived here yesterday. But your impression of will he not of come? Shetland. Why won't you come, Simon? Uh, it's the fact I have other shows to do, which uh, don't necessarily benefit from being at a film festival in Shetland. Well. Well, we. Uh, what do you mean? We, well, <laughs> it just happens to be the fact that on Thursday night and on Friday night I do my radio. He means show. make the effort, mate. You can have a holiday. Yeah. Come on, take well, it in lieu. Well, we That's have to leave this interview there. Just, uh, <laughs> uh, well, we arrived yesterday, um, and uh, it's fantastic to, and uh, rather surprising. You have to get a tiny propeller plane from Edinburgh. And it was so much like the beginning of The Wicker Man, which, of course, is my entire expectation of this journey. <laughs> I, I thought, well, here we go. Um, and uh, so far, it's uh, it's been lovely. Are you in the room next to Britt Eklund? She's banging on the walls Excellent. now. No, actually, no, it's, it's, it's a, the double. It's, it's the double. It's yeah. the double. It's a stripper from Glasgow. <laughs> uh, just like normal. Uh, Chris in Watford, does Mark have any plans to make a film or TV drama about Lucifer Box or to write any Lucifer Box stories? Any new ones? Um, no plans to do any new ones. Well, I, I have actually twice uh, failed to get it off the ground as a TV series. Uh, it hasn't quite worked. Which I, but, yeah, you have to say, if, you're, if you've are if failed because you are so hot on television and if you, why can't you get your own show away? Come on. I Mark. wish I knew. Uh, to be honest, uh, that, that's a, it is an abiding thing. I think a lot of people assume I kind of 
walk into a new broadcasting house and say, mm, I quite like to do the Mayor of Casterbridge, <laughs> and someone gives me a bag of money. I wish that were the case, because I'd love to do the Mayor of Casterbridge. <laughs> um, but uh, no, in fact, uh, it, it happens more often than you'd think, and it's 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 just difficult. Difficult, really, to be honest. The difficult thing is trying to get a new thing off the ground. Um, obviously, uh, Doctor Who is a massively successful reinvention, which I'm very privileged to be part of. And Sherlock, of course, is is an, another incarnation of the most film character in, in fiction. But they are titanic. Mm. I'm going to use the word. I hate it, but they are titanic brands. And Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes particularly, is known across the world. But anything new, like Lucifer Box, um, people they, they get nervous, and and when they get nervous when they have to spend money, and that's that's how it always goes. It's 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 a tough thing. But the problem is trying to convince people that there would never be those brands in the first place if it sort of hadn't taken a risk uh, a long time ago. Just one more. Uh, Gary in Bister asks, says, can you ask Mark Gatiss, please, how, can you say, first of all, how much I enjoyed his contribution to the Hammer Horror Blu-ray releases? And does he have any plans or ambitions to write a future Hammer film? Now, that would be something. Well, mm, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm just reading out a question. Have I stumbled? I'm just, no, I'm just chuckling. Have I stumbled upon a forbidden area? Maybe, maybe. No, I'd, uh, I'd love to. I think, you know, I'm so, um, I'm so thrilled at their success because anybody who knows anything about horror or Hammer particularly has. There have been so many false dawns over the years. They used. Yeah. There was a period where. The Today programme, I think, just kept the old tape of saying, and back from the grave. <laughs> That's right. uh, and someone would announce Hammer was being revived and then it never happened. And the incredible thing is they've just done it. They're just making movies uh, very successfully. Um, incredibly, their, um, their distribution arm is called Exclusive Pictures, which is what it was back in the 40s, the 30s and 40s. Um, and, I, you know, more power to their elbow. I think they're doing a terrific job. I remember I did a documentary back in the mid-90s uh, about the... And it was called The the Rise and Fall and Rise of Home. Uh, uh, and it ended up with... And they're back, you know, they're, they're back yes. And then they, they weren't, weren't. <laughs> for another 10 okay. years. But, yes, as you say, now they have successfully reinvented themselves, which right. is terrific. Yeah. Uh, Mark, we appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very much indeed. Thank and you. Uh, have nice a very to good see you or hear you yes. as ever. Have a very good night tonight.